Bueno, buenos días. Eh, bienvenidos a la rueda de prensa de la película Blind Spot, película que forma parte de la sección oficial de la 66 edición del Festival de San Sebastián. Para hablar ahora sobre la película, contamos con el placer de, de la presencia de Jonas Alaric, que es su director de fotografía, de Tuba Novotny, su directora, y Pia Chelta, que es eh, su protagonista. Bueno, como hacemos habitualmente, quizá antes de nada me gustaría que quizá eh, Tuba, como directora de la película, nos introdujera un poquito qué es Blank Spot y sobre todo es, es su debut como, como directora de largometraje después de una carrera eh, como actriz muy importante. Eh, ¿Por qué eh, debutar con una película como esta, que creo que es todo un reto ¿no? y un desafío? Sí, yeah, hay... Uh... I don't think I realized that this would be a challenge. I just uh, really wanted to uh, film this story uh, that I had written. And so only when we kind of finished the movie, I realized that it was maybe not the easiest film to do. Um, but I felt a, an uh, urge to talk about the blind spots in mental illness and uh, seeing a generation of young people growing up to be better, faster, stronger than everyone else. Uh, I felt that the blind spot that I myself saw in society was all the happy and smiling faces. And uh, actually there are a lot of us walking around having loads of problems uh, without the language to communicate about it. And if you want to um, decrease the isolation around mental illness, then talking about it is a very good starting point according to all experts. So I wanted to lift the focus on the subject and uh, make us talk about mental illness and uh, the struggles in that area. Muy bien, muchas gracias. Tenemos una pregunta aquí en segunda fila. Hi, congratulations, very good film. I'm very touched. Um, I have a technical question. Uh, what inspired you to do the film in one shot? in one continuous shot, and um, how many takes or practices did it take? So writing the script, I knew from page one that I really wanted to have this uh, told in a real-time story, uh, because I believe editing is a very strong tool, uh, and I think that the subject needs to be very carefully um, executed. Uh, we don't want to dramatize uh, mental illness or uh, suicide subjects, because when you dramatize uh, what the experts say is that uh, you usually then risk to inspire. Uh, so in terms of not dramatizing the subject more than enough or more than necessary, uh, the real time was a good way of doing that, I thought, to just be a fly on the wall, basically. Um, and we ended up shooting it three times Uh, so this is the third shot uh, of the movie. Yeah, thank you. Sí, ahí teníamos pregunta. Hi there. Uh, my question is for the actress. How how do you manage all this? Are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for caring. Thanks for asking. Yes, uh, I am really okay. Yes, I am. Uh, I was. I think I was very emotional, exhausted after these three days of shooting and also also within doing the research uh, of the story. Um, but I'm okay. I was in a very safe place with these guys. Uh, we worked very closely and it, it felt very safe. Um, the room was a bit sacred because you know, the focus that this real time, um, the choice to shoot the movie in this way also gave a nerve and a, a focus that was new to me, that was all rewarding for all of us, I think. Sí, aquí en primera fila tenemos pregunta. Hello, my name is Paul Katzenberger from Germany. Very powerful movie, very Thank you. very intense experience. Um, I just would like to know of the actress, mm, did you do research on uh, 
how people react. And then I have a, a question to the director. Um, at one point in the movie, uh, it is said the, the, the father says that they never really talked or not did not talk much to their daughter about the suicide of the biological mother. Do you think they should have talked more about it? Because it, to me, it seems like each parent really did not do a, a really safe. Hmm. They seem to be very good parents. Hmm. And so I wonder what is implied about there. Should we start with the last question? Yeah. Well, I think that's exactly it. Uh, this, m the, the mission of the movie was uh, to keep away from blame and guilt. Uh, because I don't think any of us need that. We want to try and be as good persons or as good friends or partners or parents. And I think doing a lot of research with the experts and the, and the research that is on the area, you realize that a lot of people did not see it coming, at least in the beginning. And then you start to do your own analysis of the past history of, of the person that you're uh, talking about and so on. So I wanted to examine why do we feel that we don't, we didn't see it? What, what are the signs we should look for? And talking then about a happy teenage girl who's smiling, who's good in school, she has friends, she has everything. That to me was the biggest blind spot. So no, they didn't do anything wrong. I don't think they should have or could have done anything differently. And I think that's not the focus for me at least, who should have done what uh, differently, but rather that we, all of us can you know, start talking to each other and asking each other, how are you really? Despite that, you know, you know, have nice clothes and a good job and we're smiling and our kids are doing great and, you know, um, so that's the real blind spot, you know, uh, that it seemed like everything, everything was okay. But of course, there's also a childhood trauma there that to some extent has um, affected her, her, uh, her future, you know. I, I do believe that we see uh, cases of mental illness and suicide without the same background story as she does. And we still need to, uh, I think, look for other signs that then we have been trained to look for. We think that mental illness is one thing, it's so many things. So um, no blame, no guilt, a lot of blind spots. I think so. I mean, the answer I was given from a lot of the psychiatrists that I worked with and talked to was literally to be very straight and very open. Uh, if you see someone, if you know someone who looks like they don't, you know, feel very well, then ask them straight. Are you depressed? Do you feel like uh, committing suicide? That straight. And to me, that was a very uh, groundbreaking way of communicating. But in all... Uh, all of the psychological research and, and, and expertise that I've met throughout this project, everyone is very, very straight and very, um, uh, they're all agreeing with that directness. Because as soon as you burst the bubble for someone who is in their own state of mental illness or health, then you feel less alone. And the wor worst part about suffering from mental illness is that you isolate, you feel alone. And by asking straight, do you feel like you want to kill yourself sometimes? Then you kind of break the, the bubble, which makes you feel less alone. So, yeah. Okay. And yeah. I'm going to answer a question. Uh, yes, I did some research because we worked very closely with different organizations uh, within mental health. Um, so I did a researching work on grief and shock. Um, how different people have reacted. Uh, I was told a lot of stories that I could kind of use in my preparations in a way. Um, and people react very differently to shock and grief. Um, so the, what the real time um, shooting uh, actually gave to me was that I was, and by not editing the movie, um, that was first very shocking and very terrifying. Uh, but after a while, it also gave me the opportunity to, what's it called? Um, to, to, um, to be able to be in different stages of 
of grief and shock. Uh, to do the kind of nuancing uh, and try to make the dynamics that usually is done in the editing room. I think mm -hmm. one big thing for us was too that we wanted to, out of respect for the subject and, and the many people who uh, have dealt with this subject matter, we wanted to pay respect to that situation and, and by doing it in real time, being as close to authenticity as possible and therefore not being able to be directors or DPs or actresses who kind of, you know, um, try to create a situation that is going to work as a movie, but we really wanted to to do our research and to do a truthful and uh, authentical picture of a situation like this. So uh, that's two reasons. Sí, tenemos ahí pregunta. Hello. Um, first of all, I just wanted to say thank you. Really, really thank you for the one of the most amazing films I have seen at San Sebastian this year. Thank you. Um, and I have a question for Jonas and Pia. Um, how is Tuva as a director? And um, how was working with her? I can step up. So no, no, you don't have to. Tuva is loving and caring with a strict hand because she is uh, not doing any compromises. She knows what she's doing. Uh, she has so much knowledge and she's in control of her project in a way that makes us relax. Uh, I can only speak for the actors. Don't know what you guys have been up to. But um, um, she, she had her hand on my back all the time, so it was very safe. I think uh, Pia puts it very well for me as well. But uh, Tua is very ambitious and uh, she is very close by all the time. And still she trusts you and gives you the space to do your best and brings the best out of everybody, I would say. That's, uh, it's um, very pleasant to work with her. Thank you. Sí. Ahí tenemos una. Hola, eh, a mí me ha sorprendido mucho el sistema médico de, de vuestra ciudad y quiero saber si es real que esto sucede así, porque en este caso en España nos da muchísima envidia eso de que llegue alguien con un problema tan gordo, haya una persona eh, cuidándolo de la, desde que entran hasta que salen, tres médicos, el equipo entero, tranquilidad, no hay nadie en los pasillos, eso aquí no pasa. Eso por un lado. Pero luego esta gente se queja, dicen, no habéis sabido hacer nada, no habéis podido hacer nada. Eso me plantea una duda. ¿Cuál es el problema real? ¿Es un problema de atención médica, como planteas en la, en la película, o, o va más allá? Va más allá. ¿Cuál es el problema? Para que no podamos tener control sobre las enfermedades psíquicas en este caso. Gracias. Hmm. Thank you. Um, well, obviously, I think there are going to be different situations from different countries and different systems and so on. Uh, doing the research for this movie, we kind of decided on, obviously, in a, in a capital city, you have a much more busy hospital with different uh, tools and different uh, uh, amounts of, of workers there. We decided on uh, out-of-location need, I guess, uh, shooting the movie in this specific hospital. Uh, but also because it depicted kind of a, a normal, uh, smaller city hospital. So no, it's not so busy. But uh, to answer the other question in terms of uh, what kind of staff you meet when you come to a Norwegian hospital, that is actually all over the country. And they're even working, um, I say they, I'm, I'm Swedish, so, but we are, they are uh, even working to enhance that service even more what they're doing in some hospitals in the, in the capital region right now is to have uh, emergency, in emergency suicidal teams that actually, as soon as you have a phone call of a possible usual teenage suicide, but also adult suicides, um, they go straight to the relatives, to the family's house, and talk to them immediately. So there's an, there's an emergency team, because research shows that if you act immediately on these things and do not let it become the bubble that I'm discussing in the movie, um, then you reduce uh, the, the possibilities enormously of, of uh, future uh, situations like this. Um, 
And in terms of your question about the, the blame or what the, you know, who has the responsibility, I think for me it was important that it becomes almost pathetic when the father says, why didn't you do anything? Because it's obvious that we would all do something if we knew what to do. And for me, the big focus of the movie has been not to talk about who could have done or who should have done, but how can we, we prevent? So the real kind of medical or um, psychological mission with this movie is to talk about preventional methods. And to talk openly about this matter is shown to be very preventative. Sí. Tenías tu pregunta, me parece. Te traemos micro. Hi, it's me again. Um, for the director this time, I'm just curious. Uh, the girl writes something down right before all the tragedy starts. I don't really know if she's just writing part of that essay they're talking about at the beginning or if it's something important in a diary or something because the mom does look at it at the end. Uh, and also, do we know what happens to her after the movie? No, those are good questions. Thank you for asking them. I think that uh, uh, we will not know what she wrote and we will not know what happens to her. And that is a big, uh, important thing for me that we don't. That's not the mission with this movie. And of course, it's such a dramatical event that you, you become focused on whether she survives or not. But for me, the, the main focus when we leave the movie is the fact that the mother tells the, the son, you can always come to me. That's what I want to give, you know, kind of as an ending to the story, that we have to remember to talk to each other. And maybe she lives, maybe not. That, for us, uh, should not be kind of the main focus. But obviously, of course, you will talk about it. I will not have the answers for it, because I want to keep the focus on, uh, on the future and on the preventative uh, methods. Más preguntas eh, aquí tenemos de nuevo. Um, two, two questions. Um, you keep saying that it's a mental illness, but is it a, really an illness or um, a condition that she got from the circumstances that happened with her mother? Well, there, there are no real kind of genetical or, or I mean, you talk about social economical or social psychological circumstances and so on. I don't know. We don't know what the reasons are. And even the research and the expertise don't know what the reasons are. But I think in general, if we lift kind of the issue a bit further, I think, as I started off saying, in society today, we live as, you know, with, with a concept of, of what happiness is. So I think for me, it's not so interesting to talk about what the reasons are, but rather than, than that, talk about um, how do we feel and how can we communicate to others that even though you might not have mental illness or, or a state of, of a condition where you feel worse than normally, how can we burst those bubbles? How can we be more open and then maybe <clears throat> again um, uh, not end up in a state of isolation? So you're right. I, I'm not sure whether we should call it mental illness. I mean, that's, that's a, a word everyone can understand, so we can talk from that kind of perspective. But I think it's a societal state, really, uh, that we're all very, again, trained to look at happiness as one thing. Uh, but maybe I feel personally that I'm more happy when I can communicate straightly with Pia. Oh, God, I'm so nervous right now. Or I feel total anxiety for this press conference and so on. And then it makes me feel less nervous. You know, so just those basic psychological tools I think it's very important to start talking about. Great, and another question. Um, I'm sorry, I come from the uh, production background, so my question is for DP. Um, so you said it, it took uh, three takes. What went wrong in the first two? Acting or technical issues? or And, and how many actual practice runs before you actually shot you, you, you did? Uh, yeah. This, I would say that um, nothing really went wrong in any one of them, actually. They were all three different. And uh, um, yeah, they had uh, their issues or something didn't went the way we thought in all of them. But most of all, they were quite different in many ways, actually. They were three unique happenings, in a way. Uh, so it was hard to choose between the second and the third take. They were really different. In the second one, 
the landscape was totally snowy. It was winter, which went away overnight. So they also had different expressions and acting was different, you know. It was, they had different uh, DNA, we could say. And uh, I would say we practiced for a while, and I think we did two times the whole real, like a real rehearsal from start to the end. Yeah, one, one real general rehearsal. Yeah, maybe rehearsal. one. Yeah. And one more like stepping through, maybe, yeah. 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 So, first two takes were, were done from the beginning to the very end. You did not? No, 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 okay. they were all done from the beginning to the end, three takes, yeah. And uh, you as a DP, you, you, you go through the whole movie mm. shooting, mm. or do you? No, it's actually made, um, it's made like a, what do you call it? Like, like an overlapping. Yeah, technique. an overlapping. We have two cameras actually, because we wanted the uh, different expression in different parts of the movie. So we wanted both steady cam shots and handheld parts, um, which made it more complicated than just go through. But we really wanted a bit of a different expression in the different parts. So it's overlapping r in real time, acting, nothing stops, but we kind of leave the frame over to a second camera. So I am physically operating like half the movie in two parts, and the static cam operator called Knut Pedersen uh, operates the two other parts. So it's uh, separated in four parts, you could say. So three times there are invisible overlaps that's done, but they are done in in real time with nothing stopping. Actually. That was done super smoothly. Yeah. Very, really hard to <laughs> to tell. Okay. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. ¿Alguna pregunta más? A ver si tiene preguntas. A mí sí hay, hay un aspecto, corregirme si, si me equivoco, pero creo, eh, creo que eh, parte de los, de los actores del reparto no eran actores profesionales, eran auténticos eh, empleados o personas que trabajaban en el hospital. Eh, y un poquito cómo fue este trabajo de actores profesionales con todos estos otros intérpretes. Yeah, uh, that was a lovely experience. I mean, again, the whole mission with this movie has been to be as close to real and authentical as possible, not to not to make it glorified or uh, or in any way romanticizing uh, this uh, subject because, it, as I said before, it can be inspiring to young people. So it's been very important to me to keep a very sober eye and one part of that was to use um, real uh, doctors and nurses and. Uh, paramedics and so on. So we, we actually only have four uh, experienced and educated actors and then the girl, of course, uh, who's also an actor in this movie, but she's never acted before. Um, and I think what that gave was uh, for the actors, and Pia can answer this after maybe, but for the actors to be put in a situation where everything is real. The paramedics, uh, of course, we had a script, but they helped me with the lines uh, in terms of what they were going to say. And to me, it was very important for me as a scriptwriter not to come up with this, you know, drama scene of uh, something that I believe they say from some movie I saw, but the, what they actually said. So, in that sense, I think for all of us, it, it helped creating an authentical situation. Um, and on the opposite side, for the uh, professional healthcare workers, I think it also helped um, not being so nervous because what they were doing was just their everyday uh, job. So the actors could go about with their job and the, the health workers could do the same and it became this synergy that for me was very uh, rewarding. Maybe Pia can uh, say something more about that situation. Uh -huh. Maybe Pia wants to... Yeah, I can just uh, very much agree with you that one thing gave something to the other. Uh, and for me, it was it it was closer to what would have been real and to what was real. So for me, it gave uh, it gave just the authenticity that we were aiming. Mm -hmm. Tendríamos tiempo para una última pregunta si alguien quiere. No sé si hay algo más que queráis añadir. No, bien. Bueno, pues. En ese caso, eh, solo nos queda desearles eh, muchísima suerte con la película, con la, la premiere esta noche. Y bueno, despedirles con un fuerte aplauso. Gracias por venir. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.